and welcome to the Wandering Wolf YouTube channel. I'm your host, Mark Rhodes, and I am absolutely delighted to have on the show the legend. He scored over 300 goals for Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's got a stand named after him, and I reckon, yeah, well, you've got probably got the keys to the city as well, haven't you, mate? <laughs> hey, Steve I have, Ball! I have got the, I have, I have got the <laughs> yes! Brilliant. Thank you so much, mate, for coming on the show. How are you? I'm absolutely fine under the circumstances. Just yeah. uh, we're, we're all in the same boat. I mean, you know, we've got to try Absolutely. and find things to do. That's all you know what I mean. Absolutely. Yeah, now, the first time we met was uh, back in 2003 when I was uh, trying to trying to sing and do well on a, a talent show called Pop Idol. Uh, and it's 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 been great ever since. 18 years. And the last time I saw you, I remember we played Espanyol in the Europa League when it was one of the last times we had fans in and never scored yeah. the absolute worldie and we won 4-0. Yeah. Seems about yeah, a yeah, thousand yeah, yeah. years ago. <laughs> That, that was the time when you could have a few beers, is it? <laughs> no. Oh no, mate, I miss them times so much. Uh, how's the uh, how's the homeschooling been doing uh, doing lockdown? It's been all right. It's all right, Gra Gracie. Uh, they've started doing it now, and uh, before they used to give her like uh, homework the night before, right? And uh, the next morning she'd do it in half an hour. So now, <laughs> now they're starting to do it properly. They're saying right. you're going to be there at ten o'clock. There's 11, there's 12, so it's taking pressure off us to say, Absolutely. what can we do? You know what I mean? That's true. When the when the algebra starts coming in, I'm I'm at the door, mate. So I, I've got a <laughs> I've got a four and six year old, and some of the stuff they're they're doing, I'm like, what? A noun? What's a noun? <laughs> I ain't got a clue. <laughs> well, it's it's lovely to have you on the show, mate. And obviously, we're we're on uh, to talk wolves, and now they're doing um, this season. Um, just just give us a little bit of um, a lowdown on how you think we've trans transformed in the last five years going from like League One to you know, being a staple in the Premier League? Well, I was, I was on about it yesterday uh, to Jackie and uh, Tim that uh, from even from 1986 was state the ground when we came here and looking back now to the years we've got here, we're in a fantastic place. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we've, we've been in the doldrums now for quite a few years. I'm in a few years and all the Midlands clubs have had their foot on our head, if you know what I mean. And yeah. To say, you're stopping down there, you're down there. And now the tables have turned a bit, you know what I mean? And uh, I think we're in a very, very good place at the moment for, for all these Wolves fans. Absolutely unbelievable. And uh, what we do at the moment, I must say, is we go through a transformation of mm. uh, getting youngsters in. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? I think uh, all Wolves fans uh, over the last few years have absolutely enjoyed it. You know what I mean? I think going to the Open Cup and it being the top seven and all this. We're not going to be there all the time like that. We're not going to be like the Chelsea's, Man U's and, uh, and Liverpool's and Man City's. We are going to be middle of the table until we can sustain ourselves yeah. with experience and youth. We, we ain't going to be there. It feels as though we've been running before we can walk because we've been very, very lucky with injuries, haven't we? Yeah, we have, you know, and uh, the injuries uh, last season, we was absolutely, with our, the, the backroom staff, Knew now knew what to do with the players and what, 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 what to put in cotton wool or say play this game, play that game. But this year is a bit thin on the ground. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had two massive uh, losses in uh, Jota and uh, Doherty. You know what I mean? And uh, whether they want to leave the club, I don't know. It's one of them things. But yeah. uh, a player usually wants to go if, it, if there's something happens like that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so absolutely. We are, yeah, we are two massive losses there because they were always stalwarts. Those on the right and the left, up and down, left, right and centre. And it's hard to replace them. And, yeah. Uh, Nuno was trying something different this year in the back four. And it's, it just ain't working. It just no. ain't working because the two wing backs don't know whether to come or go or backwards <laughs> side as well. They don't know what to do. And it, it epitomised on Saturday when we were losing against the stripy lot down the road. <laughs> Samuel Town. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you watch, I'm watching the game. I'm thinking attack, 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 and the players didn't know what to do. And yeah. when he actually, uh, when he actually brought Connor off and put a left back on, I went, "Oh no, no, what are we doing here? Why, why don't he go back to a back three mm. and push everybody on?" And I couldn't understand it myself, to be fair. And uh, it was a horrible, horrible game to watch. Uh, yeah, nobody, nobody turned up, and uh, it was one of the worst derbies I've seen in many, many years. 
So uh, going forward, do you think that he, he really does need to go back to the three centre backs? Because uh, obviously we, we we've lost kind of lost our identity to a certain degree, haven't we? Because we we're going back on what got us to the party in the first place, aren't we? You know, we we got two seventh place finishes. Not not forgetting the semi final, the FA Cup semi final. Yeah. We've been very very lucky for the last few seasons, and I think that's the problem when you get a little bit as a Wolves fan. Definitely, you get a little bit of that you know, glamour and you, you go to all these fantastic places in the Europa League and you want more of it. And I think we've, yeah. been, we've been spoiled, haven't we, basically, for the last two seasons? We have to be fair. And uh, you're like every, every typical Wolves fan, you get greedy. Yeah. You want more and more and more. And uh, they give Nuno a five-year plan to get in the top six, top seven. Yeah. We've already been in the top seven two years. So we've got another <laughs> two years to go. I know. You know what I mean? So... But we'll go back to the football side. Uh, the reason why we got top, top seven for two years was consistency. Yes. In the same personnel playing week in, week out, three at the back, two wing backs up and down, and push the rest on and uh, and get on from there. We ain't we ain't we ain't there at the moment. We've got too many youngsters in the side, we need yeah. some old heads in there. And uh yeah, you can go through all the way through the side to the striker to the back or whatever, but he needs to get a settled side as soon as possible. Uh, so, do you think in the transfer window, thinking about settled sides, I suppose, are we looking at a loan signing? Are we looking at a striker coming in? Are we looking? I think the midfield, I think it's safe to say that a lot of the Wolves fans are pretty happy with the midfield. It's at the back and at the front there we're, we're struggling quite a bit. Do you think we should get a striker in? Do you think we should get a defender in? I just think the, the defence looks after itself and... Uh... The way the players that have been in and out the last few games, they don't know whether they're coming or going. Yeah. They don't know whether the left, left side is playing left side, is playing right side. Where when you got Cody in the middle of the two of them, say some bowling, yeah. he controls them too and tells them where to go. Yeah. They need a dictator, you know what I mean? And uh, So at the back, I think if one of them fell, fell short, you got Den Dunker. Yeah. So you got your back, you got your back three there out of five players. So you don't need to defend that. Middle of the park, it's looking as though we're... I no disrespect to we got looking a bit slow in the middle at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we need like a, a type of Lampard, Gerard, who does box to box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when Matinho and Neves plays, yeah, Matinho comes deep and then Neves goes up a little bit, but we ain't got nobody to, uh, chap, you know, I mean going get with a bit of pace. And yeah. So I think we yeah. definitely need we definitely need a midfielder and we definitely need a striker. A, a, a striker who's proven, done it. Who's on the verge of a, a Premiership club who can't gain the side? Right, I said, okay. I said, a, I said a few weeks ago that uh, he hasn't been playing the side and he's going the side now. Who I would have gone for straight away was uh, Olivier Giroud. Oh, all day long. Me, me, me and me uh, and Craig, uh, like our, uh, the co-host, we um, we talk about Giroud all the time. A seasoned striker who knows where the goal is, and the yeah. the worst thing for us was he scored four in a European uh, European uh, Champions yeah. League uh, game for Chelsea. Because I actually think he would have been on our radar, but after that, like yeah. Lamp- Lampard's going to need him more than what we're going to need him at the moment. Um, but yeah, Giroud, like, we need a season striker. What about, um, we hear his name mentioned quite a lot, Diego Costa. What do you think of, uh, <laughs> what do you think of that, of that lad? Um, I've got to be careful to say it because he's a nutcase. He's <laughs> <laughs> Not if he's on our side. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's, he's like having Kevin Muscat in his side. No, yes. He's like animal. In his side, but uh, whether it suits us, I don't know. I think we need somebody just a bit younger than that, you know. I mean? Yeah, 28, 29, 30, you've still got a bit of run in the legs. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's more of a, a goal poacher, he's a goal poacher, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we to Jimenez does, Jimenez runs the line left, right, and center across the thing, and we ain't got nobody like that. Yeah, Silva is coming, he's very young, he's got a big price tag on his shoulders. Bring him in now and again, every 20 minutes, every half yeah. an hour, every other game. But we yeah. need somebody there now to replace him. Because you can't just bank on him now coming back and he ain't going to be scared of hitting the ball. He ain't going to be fighting the tackles. Because it's going to take him a long time to come back in. You know, Absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. Not not only physically, but mentally after like an injury like that. You know, I know that um, Don Goodman, he suffered a similar injury, didn't he? And it took a while for him to get back. But, you know, I, I think uh, we, we shouldn't even be talking about Jimenez. We don't even know whether he's going to play again. Like, fingers crossed. My God, like, let's really hope the lad comes back and he's 100%. But we need to start thinking about 
you know, we need a we need not a proper striker because that's that's harsh on Silver. We paid a record fee for him, but he's a kid, as you said. But that brings me on to yeah. Catrone. Then is Catrone the answer? We yeah. paid sixteen million for him. You know, he's not yeah. he's not cheap. You know, so in <laughs> any other season, he would be our like you know top striker. So can he do the job? Do you think? There's two arguments there. You know, I mean, why bring him back and not use him on yeah. Saturday? Mm. Get, get uh, Silver off after 60 minutes. Say you've done your bit now. You've scored a goal. You've got your confidence going. Get control. And then off the lead and go. Go on then. It's like be like a whirlwind. Absolutely. Then I think the club have, have brought him back to say we don't need a striker. That's you know what I mean. You've got to think our mentality yeah. that they work and whatever. But yeah. I, I just think we, I do think we need somebody. I do because you we need do. more than one normal two strikers. You need at least three there because if you're playing two up front, you're gonna have somebody behind us wanting that shirt off your back to say I'm ready to go. If you want 100%. that one, where we ain't got nobody at the moment who wants to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah, that is so true. It's like it's hard. It's a hard question to ask because obviously we're only halfway through the season. It's looking pretty precarious, but we are looking up as well as down. It could go two ways, couldn't it? It's like I, I want to ask you this: Are we in a relegation battle? <laughs> um, well, the uh, best team in the Midlands was Saturday. Obviously, they're going to survive. Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you. That. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you predictions. <laughs> who's going down and who's winning the league as well? Okay. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, they they're not a good. T- they're not a good team. They're not a good. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, oh, no. That was the frustrating thing about it, though, mate. Because yeah. like I saw you were there in the crowd, and I could see like all the players. Like look at the players you've got out: Podens, Johnny, Jimenez. Yeah. Like those three walk into our team, and yeah. like, and yeah. that's the, that's the problem. We've been so lucky with injuries, and now we've got a little bit of a blip, and everybody's going like, oh, some people are going new, no out. Are you mad? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what oh, you yeah, wish for. Oh, <laughs> what they're talking the last, about? I think the last time they did that was with um, Graham Taylor. And, oh. uh, you know, I, I thought it was absolutely superb, Graham Taylor. And uh, it was only a minority of fans who stuck things on his windshields outside the ground. Oh, so man. Out sack and, and that got him out because he got our youth team going and everything going, whatever. And, and the last, that's the last time it happened. I think if, if they were, what do they want? No, no, look where we are. Look, look where he, he's bought us. I don't understand why. The Wolves are wanting like somebody's head on the plate at the moment. Let's survive yeah. this season. Yeah. It's a learning curfew this season for Nuno. Yeah. He's never been in this position before. Keep us up, middle of the table, and kick on from there next year. Jobs are good. And yeah, let's let's move on from the uh, Premier League because, uh, you know, we need a break. We need a break. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, the break is coming on Friday against, um, you'll know this team very well, uh, back in 1986, Chorley. Um <laughs> You know, we think we're at a low point now. That was a pretty low point, 1986. Yeah. Like, um, give us a, a little bit of a lowdown on uh, how you how you saw that game against Chorley back in the day, and how you think we're going to cope <laughs> against them this Friday, mate. I just hope it. I just hope uh, something ain't come back and they're going to be back in the bum again. Like that. Oh, I hope not. Uh, oh, God. Me and, me and Tom had already played a couple of games, and we uh, we, we couldn't play in that game. Yeah, and we had to go to Burnham Park, which is a Dog owl as well. I do apologise, Bolton fans. Uh, <laughs> one of them, like, thorns in your side, uh, McGinley and Bolton. and like John McGinley. Oh. We went down there and uh, watched that on a cold night. And, uh, you know, I mean, the pitch was just mud down the middle. And I'm thinking, this is a scrap here. But where we was then in 1986, our pitch wasn't just as good anyway. So it's just the same. Right, so fair. We should, just took, we should have just took to it. And, uh, you know, when I watched that game, me and Tomo in the boardroom, we just looked at each other, what the, what the hell have we done? <laughs> but we, we never looked back since. We just, we just went on from there, finished halfway up the league, got promoted to the league after, and then we, we just kicked on from there. So, but it was it was bad times them days, it really, really bad times. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, but you can't see anything other than a Wolves victory this Friday, can you? You know, it depends know, who we play. I don't know. I think they're going to kick and rush. They are. They're just going to kick mm. and rush over the top. And I said to Jackie the other day, I said, they, they ought to take our team and go and play on the parks pitches for two days this week and say, <laughs> this is what you've got to play on because you can't, you ain't going to have Molyneux like that down there. Yeah. You're going to have all these bumps and everything and they'll probably water it as well before you go out and yeah. it'll be a mud bath and whatever. So, you know, I think uh, they've got to roll the sleeves up. Put it this yeah. way, they've got to roll the sleeves up. It's going to be a fight, but fingers crossed we can come to it. Oh God! Wouldn't it be great to have as good an FA Cup run as we did? Like, 
that semi final because I was I was I was there and obviously the the result wasn't what we wanted but the whole day leading up to it God like if if you if you don't want to do well in the FA Cup you are nuts man like it's it's just the best competition in the world isn't it Yeah it is oh. I, I don't get um, these managers who put uh, the second string team out or the kids out I'm going it's excuse nuts. me and then all of a sudden the best players from the first team come out the woodwork and then semi final and the final and they go. We got you there. We got you there. What about the kids? Yeah, you, there, you know what I mean. Absolutely, you should take it serious. And I think, I think Nuno, he, he, since last year, I think he's taking it serious again this Good. year. Good. I hope so because it'd be wonderful for a team like Wolves who. If we do take it seriously, fingers crossed, we're not in a relegation battle when we're not really playing for seventh place or sixth place for Europe. This is our best chance of getting into Europe next season. We've got to think positive, haven't we? We've got really got to think positive. We have, we have, because every everybody presumes that we're going to be there in the top half or the top top seven all the time, and it yeah. ain't going to happen. That ain't football. No. You don't win every game week in week out. It's hard. It's hard going for the for the, for the lads to keep sustaining. The pressure they've been put under every week in week out. Yes, they get paid a lot of money to do it. Yeah. But yeah, we've been doing it now for the last two years. Let's have a little dip and then let's kick on from there next year. Hundred percent. Fingers crossed we have a great one. Anyway, while I've got you here, I want your predictions for the end of the season. I know it's only halfway, but I want to. I want to know who you think is going to be the champions. Oh my word! There's uh, three or four contenders coming at the moment. They're all hitting the uh, hitting peak at the right time. At yeah. the end. Uh, it's it's who keeps the mouth shut and does the job on the field. <laughs> yeah. there's, a few, there's a few shouting above the rooftops, i.e. Man United saying they're going to win it and do this mm. and whatever. I, ain't winning I don't any. know, you know, I think in, in, in one hand, uh, I am like a uh, armchair Liverpool supporter. I'd like them yeah. to do it again. Yeah. But on the other hand, being a Midlands person, I'd like Leicester to sneak under the radar and just, uh, just nab them. I'd love Leicester to do it because you know when like the commentators and that talk about the top six, uh, no, the big six. They talk about the big six. Yeah. Leicester don't get a look in. They won the league three yeah. seasons ago. Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? Like it is crazy. So okay, so you, you want Liverpool to win it? If not Leicester, because the Midlands connections, uh, relegation, relegation. Oh which word, which okay. three teams? Okay. You think? Oh my word! I, I think some more could get dragged into this. You know, I do seriously. Yeah. I think Burnley. I think Burnley could get dragged into it. Yeah. I think Newcastle might have a chance to get dragged into it. Uh, so I'll go. I'll, 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 I'm, I'm definitely good. I have got to go to the Albion because I think they were yeah. that poor on Saturday, but they they made us look poor. We were shocking. You know, yeah. We should have beat them three or four nil easily. One of them, but I think I think they got West Ham tonight. I think they haven't. Uh, I'm hoping that come stuck there uh, to to, uh, to just say rub salt into the wound. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like it was like Villa, it was like Villa when they beat us, they won the F, they won everything all in one game, oh. and they went down. Yeah, oh well, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, let them have their FA Cup final, their Champions League final, all in the same day. Let them stay where they are. Brilliant. Not get another win all season. Jobs are good, and that's fine. That's fine. So we have got Albion. Uh, oh, got Albion. Definitely Sheffield United. Be yeah, yeah. Hard soon scoring. Yeah. Cool. The way they're going to get out of it. So the other one is going to be a scrap, and I'm just hoping, hoping. We ain't one of them. <laughs> oh, fingers crossed, mate. Fingers crossed. Uh, now, my co-host, um, Craig, who isn't here, he wanted to ask you a question. Um, he's, a, he's a really keen golfer, and I know you are as well. You do your um, um, Steamball Foundation Golf Day. And uh, he wanted to know what your favourite um, golf course is in the, in the area, in the Midlands area, and your favourite golf course you've ever played on. He's like, he's really... Oh, my word. <laughs> I, I, I would say the, the favourite ones are not in this country. They're all Portugal. And yeah, <laughs> bit warmer, a bit warmer. <laughs> yeah. Fair. A good one, a good one over here. I'm a member of a pen, pen golf club. Yeah, that's a nice golf. But the best one I, I think is round this, round the end of the Canica one is Bowdeser, Bowdeser Canic Chase. Okay, absolutely beautiful. If you get a chance to play that, go and play that. It's in, it's in like these pine forest trees avenues. Beautiful, but you need to play golf to play there. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, fully won't play, uh, play there then because he's rubbish. Uh, <laughs> he's not here. He can't he say that he's not. Yeah, exactly. He can drive the buggy. He can be the caddy. Brilliant. Um, mate, it's been an absolute joy to have you on the on, on the channel. Um, and thanks for coming on. And fingers crossed for a great second half of the season as well. Um, and uh, thank you. Uh, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. And hopefully we'll get to see you soon after this ridiculous time we're yeah. in. 
Um, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed mate. mate. Uh, yeah, so this has been Wandering Wolf uh, YouTube channel. We've got Steve Royal from Britain's Got Talent on the show. He's a Chorley fan, so we're going to be talking to him. I oh, know, tell me about it. He's a comedian as well. Hopefully, we'll be the ones cheering him up. Don't wind him up. Don't wind him up. Don't I'm, wind him out. Up. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out, mate. All right, well, it's been, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Been Wandering Wolf, Thank Steve Ball. Top man.